sister and brother surfers of the digital tsunami. So, so in this video, we're going to be correcting an, an issue. It's not necessarily an issue. So let's jump in. If we go to G4, uh, you can actually, we can actually create a word that is, uh, that's named with an, you know, the name of the word is this 70, uh, which is an integer, right? Which is kind of strange because here's why it's strange. Cause now we can go 70 and we get 17. Every time we put 70 on the stack, it's going to put 17 instead. So it's kind of, you know, it's, it doesn't, it's kind of seems like almost messy to me. See in fourth, one of the nice things about fourth is that it is very, it's very open. You can do, you know, it's very, you have a lot of liberty, uh, but that one just seems a little strange to me and maybe not strange, but so with crux fourth, what I want to do is I want to make it so that we can't do that. So right now, let me show you what crux fourth is doing. If we try to make a word 70, 10, seven plus, we should get 17 on top of the stack every time we run that. But instead we get 70. The reason we get 70 is because uh, our process input function checks to see if the value that we entered is an integer first. So when it checks this, it sees that it's an integer before it checks the dictionary, before it checks our compiled words list. Um, and it finds that it is an integer. So it just puts it on the stack, doesn't even bother checking the dictionary. So one way we can fix this, if we wanted to do it the way G4 does it, uh, it's an easy fix. All we have to do is change our if else statement here in our process input function so that uh, it checks our compiled words list before it checks to see if the value is an integer. And then it would see that there's a 70 in our compiled words list and it would never get down to this uh, integer part where it's putting it on the stack. So we could do it that way. Uh, but then there's another way I, that I thought about doing it as well, where we could just not allow a word to be named an integer. And I think that's could prevent some issues. You know, it's, it's a little more intuitive. So I think we'll just create an error message if, if somebody, if the user tries to create a word that, you know, that has that basically, or any integer. And the reason for going that route here, also another reason, is that it'd be a lot easier to uh, to decide against going to go that route now and decide against going it rather than to decide we want to go that route, you know, down the road a ways when we've got a lot more kind of an in infrastructure built up. So let's let's get into it. So the first thing we want to do is. We'll just make a little modification to our process input function declaration. Instead of returning a Boolean, we want to return an integer. And then in our for loop of our function here, we want to use kind of a nice little Swift feature here called the enumerated function that you can do on arrays. What that does is basically gives us, so we have our array, let's say our input was, you know, Bob 20, 20, Plus, that would be our array. Uh, the enumerated function, not enumerated, enumerated function gives us something like this. Like it numbers our our array. So you know each index gets a number. Um, okay, so it's so it's easier to kind of determine which index we're at. Like if if we we're programmatically going through this array and we saw a 20, we wouldn't necessarily know whether, you know, in this for loop, we wouldn't necessarily know whether the loop is on this 20 or on this 20. By enumerating it, we, we can tell that a lot easier. So we got that enumerated function, and we want to change our for loop here too to be index comma input. So now we're getting the in, index of the array and the, uh, the specific value of the array that, it, that it's looped through, that, that's in that four. 
So that's going to help us now if we scroll down to where we're calling our compile function here. We want to just get rid of that. And we're going to put if input array index minus one equals colon then. So now what this is doing is if if the uh, it's going to check any time it, it sees you know something that it, that it wants that it thinks it should compile, which would be something like this: twenty three, and then minus would be seventeen. You know, so every time it sees this col the colon, uh, it's going to start looping through it, and the compiled flag is going to get set to true, and then it's each time it loops through, it's going to be checking uh, the values and it's going to be checking for the index of the input array. If the index minus one is the colon, then it's going to give us, well, then it's going to do whatever we have here. So basically, if it's the first, if it's the name of the word, that's how we're determining, you know, that's how we're checking the name of the word. Otherwise, it would be tricky to say, like, you know, this one doesn't, this one is allowed to be an integer, or this one is allowed to be an integer. Just the first one isn't. Just the one that's followed, that is preceded by the colon. So inside that if statement, we want if int input not equal to nil. So if it is an integer, print error, word name cannot be an integer. Simple enough. Then we want to, when we do that, we want to set our compile flag to false so that it kicks it out of compile mode. We just want to stop uh, because we don't want to compile anything, right? Because you got you can't name your word an integer. So then we want compiled words dot remove last for and the reason we're doing that is because uh, by the time it gets to this point, it's already we've already put um, four, and we did that in our start compile function. Right here, we've already appended four colons on our list. So that just keeps it cleaned up. It just removes that that we've already appended. And then we want to return two. So this is where our process input, you know, returning an integer as opposed to a, a Boolean comes comes in play. So we'll, we'll return to, uh, and then I'll show you that. We'll, I'll show you how we're going to use that in a little bit here to kind of sort things out even more. So we've got our if, if it's an integer, okay, and then else on that if. So otherwise, it's not an integer. We're good. We just want to compile it. And if or if it's an integer or whatever it is, if it's not preceded immediately by this colon, then we want to compile it. We're good to compile it. All right, so that's, oh, and then uh, we need to just go down through our, the rest of our process input function and any returns here. We just want to change them from false to an integer or from true to an integer. So we've got that one, and then at the very bottom, we've got true, we'll just make that a one. So we're returning a zero, a one, or a two with our function now. So now if we go back up to our while loop, where we're uh, first calling our process input function, we're gonna make some changes there. First thing we wanna do is make this input array a variable because we, uh, we may make some changes to it here because we want to clear it out if, you know, if, if that first value is an integer, we want to just get rid of it. We don't want to deal with that, right? So we'll change it. So we have to make it, instead of a let constant, which it was, we want to make it a variable. And let's just get rid of this if, where we're calling our process input function altogether here. And we'll just, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna use return code instead. So we'll, uh, declare a return code variable, which gets the return value 
of our process input call. Input array and compiled, we'll set that to false. All right, so then we get our return code, which is good. And if our return code is equal to one, then that was, it ran, the whole function ran, right? Return one at the very bottom. So if it returns one, then we're gonna print, okay. Else, if return code equals zero, then we just wanna break our while loop and that's, uh, it, it returns zero if, if the user puts by in the terminal, BYE. So that means we, you know, we just wanna end the program. And if the return code is two, then we wanna print due to error, input was not processed. Processed. <laughs> Why did I say that like a British person? Don't know. And then here's where we, here's why we changed our input array from a con constant to a variable uh, because we are going to clear it out. If it's return code was two, we just want to clear whatever input was there and start fresh. All right. So, um, oh, and then we need to go down to our run word function where we call process input again, and we need to do basically the same thing down there. So we'll do it a little differently here, just just for the sake of showing another way of doing it. So if process input, this part, and then we go, if that's equal to one, then we wanna print okay. Else, if process input, input array, Input array compiled true is equal to two. We want to print error processing compiled word. Okay, that's good. And then we want to return false, which gets us out of our run word function. Else if process input input array input array compiled true equals zero and that was the one where we just want to end our program and we're just going to print by just to just to make things more visible you know kind of for our own purposes that way if we're calling by from within our run word function uh, we're we're going to see a by instead so we know that it's being called from our run word function as opposed to being called from our process from our our while loop up here, up at the top. Uh, and then we just return false, which gets us out of our run word function again. All right, we'll save that and let's try running things. Let's see what we get. Compiled word, I spelled that wrong. That's up here, compiled words. We get all right good so let's just create our bob word and call it all right uh in the next video what we'll do is we'll clean up some of these extra like we don't need to t you know to know that it exists in the deck twice and we don't need two okays there and that could be a problem with that like there might be a reason that that a bad reason why that's giving us two of the two of each of those so we just gotta check it out and clean it up um but for this video let's test our our stuff here, 10, seven, we'll say plus. All right, so it should give us an error now when we try to do this. Yes, error word name cannot be an integer due to error input was not processed. Let's, okay, and we were able to use integers other than in the first, right, as the name. Okay, so that's good. Let's, uh, I wanna go into our compile mode uh, where it's gonna use that run word function how can we do that? Uh, I want to I want to test out run word. So we're in the run word function, and I wanted to test out having it uh, get BYE within that run word, within that process input 
a second process input call. Maybe if we do, we could try like putting by in a call. Let's see what happens there. Oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't gonna work. Let's try Bill. Bill, 70, 70, put two 70s on the stack and then just kill our program. <laughs> okay, let's try it. By, oh, and then we get error. Okay, so that's not quite right. Exists in dict. Okay, so it finds it. And then it probably puts, let's see. Yeah, we got 70s on the stack. Did it put multiple? Hmm, that's interesting. Let's create a word uh, just for a temporary one here where we just call pop what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Or we'll just call it, yeah, that's seven. I think it's seven. Okay. And then we just empty, and that should clear our stack. Yeah, so now our stack is empty. And let's try Bill again and see if it puts two 70s on the stack. Now it puts a bunch, so okay, so we got some issues there we got to clean up too. But uh, we'll leave that by in there for now just so that we can use that uh, as a kind of to see when the BYE is being called from within. We might add some like an error there, like you can't call by in a, in a word or something like that. So in a word declaration, compiled word. So anyway, uh, that was kind of a long one. So I appreciate you sticking with me and thanks for watching. Peace out.